watch this road There's a lot to live But you got to choose Well, you used to be singing the blues But now I'm singing the news Howdy, neighbor. You've just tuned in to the Good News Program. That's what this program's all about. It's not about bad news, but it's about good news from God's Word. I've been sharing with you on the previous programs about how you can live like it's Christmas all year long. Now, what are you talking about, Brother Mike? Well, just what I said. You know how around Christmas time, People are thinking about good things and they're thinking about joyful things and thinking about peace and singing all the songs about joy to the world and peace. But yet uh, when Christmas is over with and the, 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 the tinsel and the lights and all the decorations are taken down and people go back home and then people begin to get the blues. You know, it's what you call the after the holiday blues. Well, you don't have to have those holiday blues because if you have Jesus in your heart, you can continue to walk in the joy of the Lord and walk in the peace of the Lord. Let me read you a scripture here, one of my favorite ones here from Romans chapter five. It says, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So isn't that wonderful? We are guaranteed peace with God because we have placed our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the peace from God, I mean the peace with God, makes sure that we have the peace of God. And not just every now and then, but each and every day. So I want you to get on the phone, call your friends and neighbors, let them know the Good News program is on so it can be a blessing to them as well. I'm gonna invite you into the sanctuary here at the Good News Fellowship Church in Tickfall where I shared this with our folks on how to live like it's Christmas all year long. First of all, I wanna share a song with you. It's entitled, Life is Like a Mountain Railroad. So you just shout and, and uh, enjoy the goodness of the Lord as I sing this song. Enjoy this teaching segment and I'll be back in just a few moments to pray with you. Stay tuned now. I 
And as you serve God and as you honor him and you put him first, then you'll automatically be promoted. You'll automatically be prospered. But that's not your focus. That's not your goal. Amen? 1 Timothy 6 says this, Now godliness with contentment is great gain. Oh, that's good. For we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. You didn't carry nothing in here, did you? Anybody bring a, a, bring a, a, a trailer in here, a utility trailer in here with you when you was born? We're not bringing one out either. Somebody said, I ain't never saw a hearse with a trailer hitch on it. And you ain't going to see one either because we're not bringing nothing out of here with us. You know, I know we have a little saying sometimes like uh, pack up and get ready to leave, but really we're not bringing anything. It reminds me of a, a joke one time that was told about a man said that he was bringing his goal with him, told his wife when he passes away or, or when he uh, gets ready about to pass away, just go put his goal up in the attic and he'll grab it on the way up. And they made those arrangements and after he passed away, she got to thinking about it. I'm going to go up there and check and see if he really took it with him. And she went up in there and sure enough, it was still there. And she said, you see there, I guess I should have put it in the basement. But the point is, you can't take it with you. Amen? And think about these people that work all their lives, fingers to the bone, to have so much uh, material wealth, and they leave it to their gardener, or leave it to their state, or, or leave it to people they don't even know. Think about it. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Verse 9 says, Those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Now that's the New King James Version, of course. King James says the love of money is the root of all evil. But you know, there's a lot of people that they read that wrong, and they thought it said money is the root of all evil. And you would think that after seeing a lot of things, how people trust in money, but no, it's the love of it. It's the desire of that. See, our desire should not be on things or money, but our desire should be toward the Lord Jesus in a relationship with him. That should be our desire. Proverbs eleven twenty eight says, whoever trusts in his riches, that, that's your own riches, if you trust in your own riches, you will fall. 
but the righteous will thrive. So you see, we're not teaching poverty here. It says the righteous will thrive like a green leaf. Amen. Amen. So a lot of people take these verses and teach poverty, but it's not doing that. It's talking about not being covetous, about having first things first, having God first place in your life. And then when you receive prosperity, then you won't hoard it up for yourself, but you'll give it. You'll disperse it. Amen? I mean, that's, that's the purpose of great wealth anyway. It's to disperse it. It's to give to others. It's to give to the poor. Amen? In uh, Isaiah, I believe it is, it says, It is God that giveth thee the power to get wealth to establish his covenant in this earth. You know, I've had people tell me many times, well, I don't want no million dollars. I, I wouldn't be able to use that anyway. Well, give it to me. <laughs> Just go ahead and believe God for it and give it to me. I know what to do with it. Amen. I can go on more television stations. I know more outlets to get the gospel out. Amen. I can pay television bills with it, production time. Amen. And that's what it's for. It's for the gospel to get the gospel out. A good name is more desirable than great riches. That's what Solomon said. To be esteemed is better than silver and gold. You know, Moses had a lot of things in the worldly sense. He had the best of anything. He wanted materially. But when he found out that he was a Hebrew, akin to the slaves that he was master over, he gave it all up to do what was right. He gave it all up to follow God's plan. He gave up a worldly crown, but in the end, he received a heavenly crown. Amen. See, I'm not concerned about worldly crowns. Amen. I'm not concerned about worldly uh, plaudits and popularity and all that. What I'm concerned about, what is heaven thinking about me? Amen. What is heaven saying about me? Because that's where we're going to spend an eternity with Jesus. Amen. And then when he comes back to this earth and set up shop on this earth, we're going to rule and reign with him for eternity on this earth. Amen? Hallelujah. But guess what? We in training right now. Amen. We in training right now for the millennial kingdom. Now, a lot of people are going to be scrubbing toilets in the millennial kingdom because you didn't do nothing here. Amen? But if you did something for the Lord here, amen, then you may be a governor over many states during the millennial reign. Amen. That's right. You, you, may, you may take care of the horses for Jesus or something. Amen. And I believe the scripture says God will give you the desires of your heart. Whatever you like, that's what you're going to be doing. Amen. Amen. Because God don't want you to do doing something you won't gripe and grumble and complain all that stuff like that. <laughs> like in the, remind me of them little redneck fellers on that was that TV that TV show, you know, like I told you, like, you can't understand what you're saying. <laughs> like in mumbling, grumbling, complain griping and complaining. You know, the Lord don't want to hear all of that, does he? No. No, he's going to put you in something that you like. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. But Moses gave it all up for a heavenly crown. He gave it all up for the plan of God. And see, that's what we need to look at. What is God's plan for our lives? What is God's plan and purpose for our lives in this earth? Because look, friend, we've only got a short time here. Even if Jesus tarries and you go by the way of the grave, you still have a very short time on this earth. So we need to make every day count. We must make every bit of time God has given us, we need to make it count for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Now, when all the, the laughter has turned to silence around the holidays, when Christmas is over, what, do, what should we do? We need to continue laughing. We need to continue singing. We need to keep rejoicing, amen, because the apostle Paul said don't just rejoice during the holidays. He said rejoice in the Lord always. Somebody say always. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. We can sing that all year. We can rejoice all year. We can talk about the king and his coming all year long. Amen? Because joy is not something that you get from pretty lights and candles and flowers and all that, but it's something that's on the inside that was put there by the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I done told myself happy. Woo, glory to God. I'm glad I came today. Amen? I hope you are, because I'm glad I came. Jesus said in John 15, 11, these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you. Not come and go, but remain in you and that your joy might be full. Some of you need to come up to the, the uh, filling station. Amen? And get filled up. Amen? If you're running low, I, I want you to know you can get a refill. Amen? Just like when you go eat at Wendy's or McDonald's and you drink all you drank up, you say, hey, honey, how much is a refill? I want to get a refill. God allows refills. Amen? If your joy is low, you can get a refill. Amen? And he wants our joy to be full. David said in Psalm 102, let us serve the Lord with sadness. I mean, excuse me, with with." With gladness. Isn't that what he said? With gladness. Come before his presence with singing, just like we did this morning. Amen. I didn't see not a one person coming here dragging with their lip on the ground. Now, you might have had. I didn't see you. <laughs> dragging with your lip on the ground. Got to come to church this morning. Boy, I sleepy this morning. Man, these holidays. <laughs> Praise the Lord, friend. I hope you've enjoyed that teaching segment, talking about living like it's Christmas all year long. We can enjoy the peace and the joy of Jesus Christ all year long, and we can have a giving heart all year long. You know, you always see on TV, especially on the news around Christmas time and the holidays when people are giving to the homeless and they're giving out, they're cooking meals and they're doing all the, I mean, that's all they, they're showing on the news. But what about the rest of the year? We need to be helping and giving the rest of the year as well. And uh, so I encourage you to get this teaching in its entirety. You can have it on CD or DVD for your gift of any amount to the ministry. Just call us today at 888-429-2280. We'll be glad to get this full teaching to you. You can live like it's Christmas all year long, but the first step you need to make is to make Jesus your Savior and Lord because if you don't do that, you can't have his peace. You can't have his joy. You can't have his eternal life. So if you've never made that important step, you can do that right now by saying this simple prayer and meaning it in your heart. Why don't you follow me in this prayer? Say, Heavenly Father, I believe in Jesus that he is the Savior of the world. He died on the cross for the sins of the world and for my sins. And I accept that payment for me, to give me forgiveness and eternal life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me now. I will trust you and live for you from here on. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Friend, if you prayed that prayer, the Bible says that you're born again. You are now a child of God. You're in his family, and the family benefits belong to you, and that does include his joy and his peace and eternal life. Your future is secure now because 
Jesus is your Savior and He is your Lord. And I'm so excited that I know that many of you have made that important step. And uh, I want to send this to you as my free gift because you prayed that prayer. It's a little book entitled, Now What? And this will tell you how to get started growing in the Lord. It's a journey learning about your Heavenly Father, learning about the benefits that belong to you as a believer. And it tells you how to pray, how to study your Bible. So call me today for your free copy, 888-429-2280. Once again, that's a toll-free call, 888-429-2280. If I'm not in the office when you call, leave your information on the machine and please leave a callback number just in case we don't understand all your information. So call to get your free book because this is a, a, a big help. Sometimes you need a little help to get started and this will do it. So call me today. 888-429-2280. I'm excited about what God is doing in your life today. I want to share a quick announcement. Our concert lineup for the next two months is uh, February the 1st. Dennis Calmes will be our special guest here at the Good News Fellowship Church in Tickfall, Louisiana. And March the 1st, Tim Frith and the Gospel Echoes will be our special guests and I'll be singing as usual. So especially if you've never been to one of our monthly concerts, you want to come out and be with us because we have a great time in the Lord. Uh, country gospel, southern gospel music all evening long and good food and fellowship. And we always have some type of country cooking like jambalaya or fried chicken and uh sausage sandwiches and just all kind of good stuff. So be sure and uh, go on our uh, online website for more information at mvmgoodnews.com or you can call us and ask more information about that. Don't forget about our regular church services that we have here at Good News Fellowship Church every Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. If you're just passing through or you live in our area and don't have a home church, we want to invite you to come out and be with us any Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. And we have a map on our website if you don't know how to get here at mvmgoodnews.com. I want to say a special thanks to all my friends and partners that make this outreach ministry possible. Partners, we could not do what we do without your help. Thank you so much for praying for us and thank you for giving financially so that we can pay our airtime and our production costs. It's because of you that people are being saved and they're being touched and blessed by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. If you're watching or listening today and you haven't become a Good News Partner yet, please pray about doing so. We have more partner information on our website and you can read all about that at mvmgoodnews.com. I want to say a special prayer for you right now. Father, thank you so much for all of our viewers today and all of our listeners by radio and by internet. Lord, I just ask right now that you heal the sick, that you strengthen the weak, and set the captives free by your power and your anointing. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for the harvest, for bringing people into your kingdom in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I know this program has been a huge blessing to you because we do get uh, uh, so many um, emails and we get, uh, we get snail mail from people that tell us that they enjoy the program. So continue to do that. Continue to send in your letters. Continue to send your prayer requests and continue to send in your emails because we love to read uh, your, uh, your letters and we love to pray for you. I want to share a song with you in closing right now entitled Hard Knocks. This is a song that old Gerald Crabb wrote, one of my favorite songwriters. So you enjoy this song and I'll see you next time right here on the Good News Program. God bless you. I've learned along my way But it's given me a better understanding To 
reach out to that soul that's gone astray. If I can take these hard knocks, teach somebody where I'm going and where I've been. If I can help that weary soul, haunt them to heaven, and maybe help someone avoid the traps of sin. Wound up in the hall pen, we are told. When he realized his life had been wasted, he bid the pigs farewell, then he headed home. If I could take these hard knocks, teach somebody where I'm going, where I've been. If I could help that weary soul, Someone avoid the traps of sin. Go play it now. Traps of sin. Maybe help someone avoid the traps of sin. I appreciate your interest in my songs and music. If you would like more information concerning my music or preaching CDs, you can write and request a product list. Send all correspondence to Mike Vaughn Ministries, Post Office Box 550, Tickfall, Louisiana, 70466. Or email us at mvmgoodnews at aol.com. And our website is mvmgoodnews.com. Thanks for sharing this time with us today. We hope you have been blessed and encouraged. Remember this program is brought to you by our friends and partners. Pray and ask God what you can do to help us spread the good news. Well, used to be singing the blues, but now I'm singing the news. I'm singing the news. I'm singing the good news.